Hi everybody, we're here today to do a video on medium Australian Labradoodle puppies. This is, th these puppies are six weeks old and this is their litter update. So today we're going to do things a little bit differently. Normally you hear from me and I tell you what the puppies have been up to, give you their weight and a little bit of information on their color and pattern. But now that the puppies are six weeks old, we're going to change things up a bit. These little Labradoodles are already showing us their personalities. And we have Taylor here working with the puppies every day. So Taylor has already started her written assessments of the puppies, which are, is one of the things we're going to rely on when we have allocation day, which is coming up very shortly. So today, these little Labradoodle puppies are going to come. They're going to be done in birth order as we always do them. And I'm going to give you a little synopsis of what Taylor's assessments are of each of the puppies. That's just a little bit of an insight to what we see going on with the puppies. Now don't take everything as solid gold gospel. The puppies are still young enough that they may change and they, we wait until the absolute optimum time before we do our final assessment. So each of us, Reynolds, myself and Taylor, have all started doing our assessments, but it's Taylor's assessment that we're going to rely on today. So here we have our light blue collar boy. Light blue is our firstborn in the litter and he is this pretty mahogany brown color. Just a beautiful little boy. And I'm going to use Taylor's notes today. Obviously she's written them, not me, so I'm going to be referring uh, to them throughout this video. So Taylor's comments are light blue, is that he loves going outside, but he also is just as happy to come back in as soon as he hears somebody new in the doodle den. So oftentimes the puppies now are uh, able to go out all on their own. They're big enough, they know how to use the doggy door, they've got that mastered. So the puppies go in and out of the house on their own. But as soon as Mr. Light Blue hears somebody that's come into his area, he's right back through that doggy door to come and greet us. He really enjoys being with his litter mates. He likes to play, but he is the type of puppy who is also quite secure and quite fine on his own. The times that we've removed him from the litter and had him doing things on his own, he's been perfectly fine, no stress whatsoever. He is very affectionate, as you can see. He was asking for me to pick him up rather than play with the toy. He really does love to cuddle and kiss, as you can also see. He's very quick to learn new things. He's very responsive to that. He takes a lot of cues from uh, your tone of voice and he also will communicate back. So if he wants to go outside and the doggy door is closed for some reason, he'll complain. If he wants to come back in and we're perhaps cleaning out his pen and we have him so that he's separated from his sleeping quarters, but he wants to come in for a nap, he'll talk to us and say, well, hey, can you hurry it up a bit? So a really nice fellow all the way around. It's solid in the middle of the pack, no issues, no concerns. And now all of the puppies uh, in this litter are in our Head Start program. So these puppies have started Head Start already. They've been doing it for a week. So they've got a real advantage uh, when the whole litter signs up. It's great. It gives them lots of extra time with the program. So that's like Blue Collar Boy. Next we have Brown Collar Girl. Hello, sweetie girl. Bye, buddy. Here you go. Hi, pretty. Now, the first thing you'll see with this little one is she's giving me a tail wag when she comes down. That's something I always like to see. What is their first response when they come to see me? He, she was just being held by Reynolds before he gave her to me, and then he put her down here. And of course, that's a bit of a transition for a young puppy to go from being held by one person to then going to see another one. Right, Brown? A little brown. And now Taylor's comments on brown collar girl are, I just got to find them here. Brown collar is a people lover. And I would agree with that assessment wholeheartedly. That's what I mean about her tail wagging. She really does respond positively to people. 
she really is right now having lots of fun uh, getting her teeth through. So you will find her chewing on whatever is available right now. And certainly when you go in and you sit on the floor with the puppies right now, Brown is one of the pu first puppies to be chewing on your toes. I try to remember to wear shoes when I go in and not my sandals, because lots of times you'll hear me going, ow. Uh, so she does chew a lot on her toys. She's really responsive to her chew toys as well, which are the Puppy Love products as well as their bones. They're just starting on their bones. And these guys are still growing. We didn't weigh them for this week because they're too big now to fit on our scale and they're too squirmy. So the next time they'll get weighed is when they go for their wellness checks. So we've had to change their ID collars, which are these right here, a few times. So we check them quite often because it's amazing how fast the puppies can grow and how soon that these collars become too tight for them so we're forever adjusting them fortunately they come with a great amount of play in them so the other thing that Taylor says about brown collar girl is that she's as well as being very affectionate she is one of the quietest puppies and this is true I don't believe we have heard brown collars voice yet uh, she has not barked yet she's not one of the puppies who growls when she plays she doesn't bark when she plays she's just a very quiet very calm reserved girl so that's our sweet little brown collar girl next coming up we have purple collar boy hi buddy how are you hello now oh, purple collar boy oh what was that hey sweetheart purple collar oh this is i know one of taylor's favorites she the first thing she has written down about him is how sweet he is and he is a little bit of a doll we have a couple of little dolls in this litter and you can see there's some affection here lots of kisses very strong eye contact and you can tell just from the demeanor and the expression on this puppy's face that this is a quieter puppy slightly more reserved and definitely always looking to people for cues so Taylor says as well that Purple never fusses when she or he rather is in a new environment. And that's true. As you can see right now, he's here. He's been with Taylor, then with Reynolds. Now he's here in my arms and he's totally fine with that. He doesn't mind being passed around. He doesn't mind going from outside to inside to being filmed on a video. He's all just fine with you, isn't it? Yeah. As long as there's someone there and someone that's going to cuddle him, he's totally happy about that. She, Taylor says that uh, Purple Collar Boy is uh, very playful, really enjoys toys, and his siblings equally. Very affectionate, as I said, and on the quieter side. So generally speaking, our assessments pretty much are bang on with one another. But it's really important that we have more than one person doing the assessments. Because sometimes my experience might be, it might have just been a bad moment for for one of the puppies. It might have been a day when something happened that upset them. And so my assessment may say, oh, this puppy is a little bit timid. Whereas Taylor might see the puppy two hours later and say, oh, this is a really outgoing puppy. So we keep track of our assessments and we compare them all the time. So if something like that occurs, we get together and we figure out what it is that maybe caused that discrepancy. So now we're going to say goodbye to this sweet little purple collar boy and we'll have orange collar boy. Orange Collar Boy has a nickname in our house. Orange Collar Boy is called our opera singer. <coughs> and that's because Orange Collar likes to communicate quite a bit. He likes to tell us when he wants to go out, when he wants to come in, when he wants to eat, or any other subject he wishes to talk about. And he makes sure that we hear him. So he too is simply just a sweetheart. Again, you can see very similar presentation, very similar soft facial expression, very quiet, looking to me for reassurance, even giving me a little lean here so that he gets a snuggle to give him a little bit more security. So Orange is not quite as adaptable and confident as Purple Collar uh, Boy was because he's giving me that little lean right now. He does adapt really well to new environments though. And Taylor uh, mentions his opera singing skills, saying that he is an aspiring opera singer, but he shows us virtually no signs of stress. He's not worried, stressed, or upset when he talks to us. He's merely communicating with us. And generally speaking, in our experience, when we have a dog who communicates well, 
that is a dog who forms an extremely strong bond and usually is very intuitive because they have that little extra ability to communicate. This one, uh, Taylor says, orange collar boy really likes to be independent and separate from his siblings. So when he is outside, he will take off and be a little bit away from everybody. He likes to go and explore things and try them out on his own first. He loves all the toys and he was one of the first ones to go and find the slide. And uh, he didn't care whether it was the bigger slide or the small one. He just really likes going up and down the slide. So that's our handsome orange collar boy. Thanks, buddy. Next, we have one of our little sweethearts here. This is Black Collar Girl. Black Collar Girl is the smallest puppy in the litter. And she is another one that my first, uh, my first comment is going to be, oh, she's one of the dollies. She's just a real sweet little angel. Oh, she's so cozy and cuddly and friendly. Just the sweetest little thing. I just love her little face. It's just adorable. So Taylor says uh, Black is extremely confident and outgoing, which I agree with. She may be small, but holy cow, nothing upsets her, scares her. Really affectionate. She has very strong eye contact. And she is, as Taylor says, small but feisty. And I would totally agree with that. She has no problem holding her own with her bigger brothers and sisters. No, you don't. You are just one little cookie, aren't you? Yes, I just want to eat you all up. You're so sweet. Uh, she is also similar to Orange, likes to be independent. And I've noticed that as well, that she will take herself away from the group. Now part of that shows me that she has really excellent problem solving skills because what she's done is figure out, hmm, I'm smaller, so I'm gonna go over here and do my own thing. I'm gonna find a toy that's mine and nobody else is gonna fight me or bug me or try and take it away from me. I've also noticed a few times she has excellent problem solving skills if one of the larger dogs is trying to bully her. She is very adept at knowing how to get away from them. She does little sideways moves, she skitters a out, and she also can go and hide in the very back of the crate. She'll sit on top of the toy that she's got that she wants to keep and she knows that her brother or sister will get bored with that very quickly and leave her alone. When she has a chew stick or a bone, the first thing she does is take it into the crate. She goes into the very far back of the crate and that's where she likes to enjoy it because that's where she feels that she's most safe and secure. She does love to play with the toys on her own, as, as Taylor said, and that is all part and parcel of the fact that she's the little tiny one in the group. So that's our little doll black collar girl. Next we have green, uh, no, gray collar, sorry. Gray collar boy, hello, handsome. And again, here we have that lovely wagging tail. When he comes in, he's right away sitting down, comfortable, relaxed, and saying, okay, what are we gonna do? Let's play. So Taylor's comments on gray collar is that he is a rock star in new environments. And again, now you can see the difference between this puppy and the last puppy. Definitely a difference between this one and Black Collar Girl. He's not in the least bit concerned. He's much more alert. His face and his expression are much more forward, much more outgoing. And that just shows us that he has a little bit more confidence in himself. This is a puppy with extreme, he's very, very gregarious. Oh, but he might be a little bit kissy too. I think so. Very happy to be on his own, but for different reasons than Black Collar Girl is. He has no need to go and separate himself from the rest of the gang because he can just keep up with the rest of them with no problem. He is one of the larger puppies. But the reason why he likes to go and do things on his own is more because that's just part of his personality. He's a little bit of a leader. He's the one who's going to go and go, hey, what's that over there? And run over without paying too much heed to the fact that it might be a, a cliff that he's going to fall over or something. So he's a, a real go-getter. He too can be a little bit vocal to communicate, but uh, he, he doesn't talk as much as Orange Collar Boy does by any means. He'll tell me if I'm being too slow making his dinner. He definitely tells me that. And his favorite thing, if he'll do it now, he might not do it right now because of this environment, but his favorite thing is to be cuddled and to be held, yes, there, see, immediately settles upside down. 
This shows me huge trust with people, a very affectionate, very calm, confident dog. No problem at all in this strange environment that I just flip them upside down and give them a tummy rub. Yeah. Great dog. That's Mr. Gray Collar Boy. Next we got dark blue collar girl who doesn't have a collar on. Light blue and dark blue both lost their collars at the same time. Now dark blue collar, this is another very outgoing and confident puppy. Hi, how you doing? What's that, eh? Where are you? Oh my goodness, you want me to give you a cuddle? Will you come sit up here with me? What a good girl, oh, what a good girl. Oh, she's just a doll. This girl really loves playing with green collar. The two of them are very best friends. They are almost always playing with one another. They will choose to play with one another over toys most of the time. Very, very, very affectionate and cuddly. Uh, Taylor says she's always bouncing around, very playful and quirky. And her favorite toy is the grass or the weeds. This is a puppy that will go to the edge of the fence and she will watch the grass or the leaves blowing and then she'll run after them and try and capture them all. She also is a puppy who is a little bit of an escape artist. She figured out how to squeeze through our gate. Oh, this was maybe two and a half weeks ago when they very first went out. Um, she was very quick to figure out she was small enough to fit through the opening. She can't fit through anymore. But this is a puppy who uses her intelligence, comes up with creative solutions, and whoever gets this puppy is going to have to be on top of things because she'll outthink you in a flash. But you will always be smiling and laughing because she's going to be full of crazy antics and just keep your whole family giggling the whole time. Isn't that right? Eh? Made me start blue, that. and of course all the kisses, lots and lots of kisses. So that's dark blue. Next is red collar girl. Hi, BB. How's my sweet princess? Hello. How are you? You're a good girl, aren't you? Yeah. Let's see. What did Auntie Tay Tay say about you? Hey, what did she say about you? Did you get a good rating? I gotta find you. I gotta find you in Taylor's book here. Oh, you're the very first one. Taylor's first comment about Red Collar is that she will, uh, she very much wants to get what she wants. And she will tell you that she is not getting it if she isn't getting it. So she vocalizes to get what she wants. So this is a puppy that we spend a lot of time ignoring because we don't want her to associate making a racket and fussing with getting what she wants. We want her to associate the opposite. So what we do when she does tend to carry on, or if she does, then we turn around and we totally ignore her. She gets no eye contact, she gets no cuddles, she gets zip, nothing from us at all. It's really working well. She's already started to become a little bit less talkative and demanding about things. Mostly I would say she was demanding more than talkative, where she thinks everything should just go her way all the time. A little bit of a spoiled brat maybe. She too loves being outside. She's not a fan of being alone. So again, this is one of the things that we have been working on since uh, we have everyone signed up for the Head Start program. So when she goes in the crate, she's probably one of the biggest complainers. She doesn't like the idea of being alone in her crate. So whoever gets this puppy, it'll be very helpful that she's had lots of extra time being alone in the crate. Because we just simply put her in there, we turn the music on, and we leave her until she settles. Now we don't just leave her and walk away. We wait till she settles and we only wait for even just a split second of quiet and then we reward her. We take her out, we give her a big kiss, we tell her what a good girl she is and then we play with her for about maybe two minutes and we put her back in again. And we keep doing that over and over and over and over until we can put her in and all she does is go to sleep and she gives up and learns that hey, there's nothing wrong with being in here. I'm not locked in here forever. So we haven't quite got that to that stage yet with her, but I expect probably in the next so oh, maybe four or so days, we'll be moving along with that with her. And then we will start putting her in a crate where she can and can see us as well to give her more of a challenge to be successful with that. Cause that's what your family wants. Yeah, quit biting me. You'll see she's a little bit nippy there. So that's another thing that we observe and we work on and and uh, all part of the, the Head Start program. Right, you little monkey? Yes, do some bad girl. Next is your sister, yellow collar girl. Hello, pretty girl. 
Hi, how are you? And another nice little tail wag for a greeting. Hello, my pretty girl. Your collar is okay. Yellow collar. Taylor's comments on yellow. She says she's a shy little girl, but her confidence is growing every day. And I would agree with that. She is one of the most reserved puppies. She likes to just wait and hang back. She wants somebody to show her the way, tell her what to do, and reassure her that it's safe. And you can see from this dog's body language, she is displaying all of that right now. She wants me to hold her. She'll look around, but she's certainly not like you've seen in the other puppies who have more confidence. So she really enjoys playing with toys. And part of the reason she enjoys playing with toys is because, of course, they're inanimate. And so they are not a threat to her in any way. She's not a real big fan of loud noises yet. So part of her Head Start program is doing extra sound desensitization. And when we do sound desensitization, we do all sorts of crazy things. So the dogs all have stainless steel bowls and the floor uh, in the doodle den is a concrete floor. So we take the bowls and we throw them around on the floor. They make a huge noise. The things that make the most noise are the puppy pants. So we'll take those and we'll clang them together and we'll throw them on the floor. Reynolds often comes in and goes, Bruh! and you can see how that provided her with a little bit of startle. But she gets over it really quickly now just because she's got the security of knowing I'm here. And that's what we do with her. When we expose her to this desensitization, we provide her with the security so that she knows that, oh, something just, oh, oh, what was that? Just something else just happened. But it's okay because mom, dad, Taylor are, are holding me. So it's okay. So we keep doing that and giving her all those positive reassurances. And that way she, she learns that, oh, it's okay. When bad things happen or scary things happen, nothing happens to me. I'm safe. I'm secure. She, uh, Taylor says she really enjoys being outside, and I would agree with that. And she does enjoy being held and cuddled like this, but I can also tell from the way she's hanging on to me, this is where she's not the most comfortable, and Taylor agrees with that well, that what she really likes is to be down, and she prefers to be petted rather than to be held. So again, that's not a big issue. You're not going to be holding them once they're older anyways, because they'll be too big, unless you're doing some weight training so it's good as long as she's comfortable with being handled and handled all over her body so she's the kind of puppy we're going to do all of this foot work with we're going to do the ear work with and we're going to open our mouths put our fingers in touch her tongue touch all over the place so make sure that she's completely comfortable with that and then she's also the puppy that i'm going to spend extra time going upside down in my arms. And you'll see there's a totally different response where she doesn't relax as readily. But there, she'll look to me, hi. She's looking for my facial expression. She's looking for reassurance there that this is gonna be a good thing. And she's starting to relax into it just a little bit. Her legs are still a little bit tense. So if I was working with her, I would do this and keep talking to her. I might sing to her, I might hum to her and get her to relax these paws so that they're not crossed and that they're really loose and supple. See, this one's a little bit tense still. I want them all to be like this. All four of them, yeah. All four of them for my little baby. And then I'll just tell her what a great girl she is and let her go somewhere comfortable. So that's yellow collar girl. Oopsie. I think they all need their claws cut again because I can tell she's got her one of her nails stuck in my shirt. So it'll be nail clipping time after the video. There you go, Miss Yellow. And next we have Green Collar Girl. Hi. Now I have to tell you that Green Collar Girl, she gets a little bit of extra attention because she's so tiny. <laughs> but as Taylor says, she's tiny but mighty. It always seems to be the way. It doesn't matter what litter it is. The smallest puppies always have the biggest personalities. Perhaps it's just a natural thing that they need to do that in order to survive and compete against everyone else. But little green collar girl, oh my goodness, she's just, she runs whenever you come in with a 
biggest smile on her face. She's like, hi, here I am. And even when all 11 are coming rushing up to say hi at the same time as they, they often do, she is really super smart. She's figured out how to get herself in just the right position to be the one who's paid attention to first. Taylor, Taylor calls her unstoppable. She is not in the least bit phased by anything new. Indeed, she is the puppy who generally is the first one to try everything. This is a puppy who is not what we call a thoughtful puppy. She doesn't hang back and watch what everyone else is doing and think it over. She just goes head first into whatever it is. She's all gung-ho all the time for all sorts of new experiences. She just loves playing on our wobble board. So we have a wobble board, which is just a, a human exercise wobble board. It's really good for the puppies to develop their confidence. It also develops their coordination and it also gets their muscles going. And inevitably they seem to think that's the best place to poop. One would wonder why you would choose this thing where you have to balance and struggle to poop on, but puppies seem to like to do that. And this little one, she loves to be on the wobble board. She thinks that's one of her, the most fun toys we have as well as the slide. And she was the very first puppy to go up the big slide and go all the ways down the right way. And she'll do that over and over again. She's very confident, as I mentioned. Quiet girl too. You never hear her. I have not heard her voice yet. So I have no idea if what her bark might sound like. Right, princess? Yes, we love you. We love you because you're such a cute little thing. Yes, that's our green collar girl. And last but not least is our incredibly handsome tan collar boy. Hello, sweetheart. Now this little fellow, when he was younger, he was the mouth of the litter. He was forever going on and on and on and making a big production and making a big fuss out of things. Oh, weren't you? Yes, you were. You were always talking and complaining about something. He was forever complaining. He was also um, not quite as confident as the other puppies were. Oh, that's an interesting way to sit. Looks like you, you're praying or something. <laughs> so now Tan Collar has grown into being a very confident puppy. He too absolutely loves being outside. Being outside is something that pretty much they always all enjoy, but some of them a little bit more than others. He's totally fine doing his own thing. He doesn't need anyone, uh, any of the other puppies around for him to have a good time and enjoy life. He's a bit of a leader now. The other puppies will watch him and take cues from him as they recognize him as being one of the puppies who is the uh, more confident one. Really great with independent play. This is a puppy who uh, has that sort of natural tendency to work well in a home office environment or somewhere where the people are going to be engaged quite a bit and he's going to have to entertain himself. He loves to cuddle, he does indeed, and he shows huge amounts of affection. When he is in your arms, he is generally kissing away. Apparently he's not sharing any kisses right now. He looks like he's a little bit concerned about why the bright light is shining in his face, <laughs> which sometimes happens when we come in to do the videos. So that's our last puppy. And that's everybody and those are Taylor's initial assessments. Now, as I said, the puppies are still developing. They're still not quite old enough for us to say, yeah, this one is definitely like this. These are all the tendencies and the traits that we have seen them exhibit so far. The puppies are all doing great. MJ's gone home now. Uh, she went home yesterday. This is their first full 24 hours without mom. Doesn't seem to be a problem. Um, now, of course, Ripple is helping with that because Ripple is an auntie and she is the type of auntie who just loves to play the auntie role. And Ripple is a little bit like a deer. So she just leaps in and out of all three of the puppy pens. So she is outside with the puppies regularly. She's also aware that MJ's gone home. She's gone in twice a day. She's given them all little kisses. She's licked them up and made sure that they're clean and tidy. She doesn't eat their food ever. She's really good about that. She goes and checks their toys and she will steal their toys if she thinks it's particularly valuable. But mostly what Ripple's doing is giving them that anti-advice, letting them still be around an adult female, learning their doggy etiquette, and providing them with that comfort that, oh, mom's gone, but Auntie Ripple's still here. So it's really nice when you have an, a really great anti-dog like that. 
Otherwise, they're doing fabulously. They're sleeping really well. They're doing really nicely in their crate training. Couple of them that still need a little bit of an extra. Okay, we gotta get over this hump now. Some of them are already just perfectly fine. Don't say a word. Uh, some of them opt to go into the crate. They're all eating really well. They're only eating raw food now. They don't have any of the goat's milk anymore. Just raw food and water and of course their uh, only supplements, which really helps a lot with their digestion uh, and developing a really strong immune system. And of course that's something we wanna see in a young puppy. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please ask away in the comments below. Uh, if you have anything that you observed with the puppies that you aren't sure about, or you want to know what any of our comments mean when we do our assessments or anything that comes to mind, please ask. I'm always happy to talk about Labradoodles. And we hope you're subscribed to our channel so you can see all of our little updates from Van Isle Labradoodles. Thanks so much for watching.